in praise of television. Before you read, how do you watch television? How do you receive television programs? Choose as many as relevant. Which TV channels can or do you watch? How are the television programs paid for? When do you watch television programs? How do you watch television programs? The article, The Great Survivor. TV has coped well with technological change. Other media can learn from it. Newspapers are dying. The music industry is still yelping about iTunes. Book publishers think they are next. Yet one bit of old media seems to be doing rather well. In the final quarter of 2009, the average American spent almost 37 hours a week watching television. Earlier this year, 160 million of them saw the Super Bowl, a record for a single program. Far from being cowed by new media, TV is colonising it. Shows like American Idol and Britain's Got Talent draw huge audiences, partly because people are constantly messaging and tweeting about them and discussing them on Facebook. Advertising wobbled during the recession, shaking the free-to-air broadcasters that depend on it, but cable and satellite TV breezed through. Pay television subscriptions grew by more than 2 million in America last year. The explosive growth of cable and satellite TV in India explains how that country has gone from two channels in the early 1990s to more than 600 today. Pay TV bosses scarcely acknowledge the existence of viewers who do not subscribe to multi-channel TV, talking only of people who have yet to choose a provider. This is not merely bluster. As our special report this week explains, once people start paying for greater television choice, they rarely stop. The advantages of indolence. It helps that TV is an inherently lazy form of entertainment. The much repeated prediction that people will cancel their pay TV subscriptions and piece together an evening's worth of entertainment from free broadcast and the internet assumes that people are willing to work three times harder to get the same thing, observes Mike Fries of Liberty Global, a cable giant. Laziness also mitigates the threat from piracy. Although many programs are no more than three or four mouse clicks away, that still sounds too much like work for most of us. And television watching is a more sociable activity than it may appear. People like to watch programs when everybody else is watching them. Give them devices that allow them to record and play back programs easily and they will still watch live TV at least four-fifths of the time. Yet these natural advantages alone are not enough to ensure television survival. The internet threatens TV just as much as it does other media businesses, and for similar reasons. It competes for advertising, offering firms a more measurable and precise way of reaching consumers. Technology also threatens to fracture television into individual programs, just as it has ruinously broken music albums into individual tracks. TV has endured because it has responded better to such threats than other media businesses. One of the lessons from TV is to accept change and get ahead of it. Broadcasters' initial response to the appearance of programmes online was similar to the music industry's reaction to file sharing, call in the lawyers. But television firms soon banded together to develop alternatives to piracy. Websites like Hulu, a joint venture of the American broadcasters ABC, Fox and the NBC, have drawn eyeballs away from illicit sources. Gradually, it has become clear that these websites pose a threat to the TV business in themselves and that they are not bringing in as much advertising money as might be expected, which is similar to the problem faced by the newspaper business. So television is changing tack again. With impressive speed, TV firms are now building online subscription video services. The trendiest model is authentication, Prove that you subscribe to pay television and you can watch all the channels that you have paid for on any device. Such TV Everywhere services are beginning to appear in America and Canada. It is likely that Hulu will become a freemium service, mostly free, but with some shows hidden behind a paywall. The move from an ad-supported model to a mixture of subscriptions and advertising is tricky, but logical. It shows that it is not enough to embrace technological change. Businesses must also work out how to build digital offerings that do not cause their analogue ones to collapse. Television has domesticated other disruptive technologies. Ten years ago, digital reco video recorders like TiVo promised to transform the way people watch TV. The device devices made it easy to record programmes and play them back, zooming through ads. The TV networks responded by running ads that work at high speed. 
Cable and satellite companies built cheap digital digital video recorders into set-top boxes and charged viewers extra for them. In effect, money flowed back into the television business. In Britain, those boxes will soon be deployed to deliver targeted advertising, enabling the living room television to compete with the internet. Other outfits are learning from TV. Record labels sound terribly innovative when they talk about bundling music together with broad brand subscriptions. Yet this model comes from television. For the past few years, ESPN, a sports giant, has been showing games on its website. The cost is buried in monthly broadband bills. Hulu-style joint ventures are all the rage in media too. Magazine publishers have set up Next Issue Media, which is trying to shape the evolution of digital devices to suit their needs. The digital entertainment content ecosystem aims to do the same for films. That box might appear to be sitting in the corner of the living room, not doing much. In fact, it is constantly evolving. If there is one media business with a chance of completing the perilous journey to the digital future looking as healthy as it did when it set off, it is television. Exercises. Read the first two paragraphs of the text. Mark the statements T, true or F, false. The recording music industry is finding it difficult to operate in the internet age. Television broadcasts are getting smaller numbers of viewers. The income from advertising was badly affected by the recession. Free-to-air broadcasters had to cut their program budgets because of reduced revenues from advertising. Cable and satellite broadcasters were less badly affected by advertising cuts. More and more viewers are now paying subscriptions for pay TV. Our reports suggest that most viewers prefer free-to-air broadcasts. When viewers experience the greater choice offered by multi-channel TV, they are willing to pay more money for an even greater choice. Read the third and fourth paragraphs of the text. Mark the statements T true or F false. Most people plan their evening entertainment from the pay TV, DVD, personal recordings, internet downloads and free-to-air broadcasts. Most people are too lazy to plan their evening entertainment from the pay TV, DVD, personal recordings, internet downloads or free-to-air broadcasts. Even though most people have video recorders and other way to access TV program libraries, 80% of their TV viewing time is spent watching live broadcasts. Internet advertising is more powerful because it can be targeted at the individual customer's personal interest revealed by their previous downloads. Music libraries such as iTunes have reduced sales of CD albums because people can download the individual tracks they like rather than buying the whole album. The internet threatens to break up the TV industry in the same way. Read the fifth and sixth paragraphs of the text. Mark the statements T true or F false. At first, the TV broadcasters tried to stop internet distribution of TV programs by saying that piracy of TV programs was illegal. Hulu is a website like iTunes where viewers can pay and download programs from ABC Fox and the NBC. Fortunately, these websites gain enough income from advertising and downloads. Unfortunately, this income is not sufficient, so TV is changing its plans. Subscription video services are now being developed. If you subscribe to pay TV service, you can watch it on any device. You will have to pay for some shows on Hulu, but most will be free. Businesses need to adapt to changes in the technology available to customers. Read the last three paragraphs of the text. Mark the statements T true or F false. Digi digital re video recorders allowed viewers to record programs for later viewing and also allowed them to fast forward through the advertising breaks. Satellite and cable broadcasters added digital recorders to their set-top boxes. New set-top boxes will register the programs which have been selected and delivered targeted advertising to the viewer. Pay TV subscriptions are often sold instead of broadband access. Next Issue Media has been set up by magazine publishers to sell their content through digital devices. The TV business is a good example to other media industries. Look carefully at the words in italics. Choose A, B or C to complete the sentences. If you yelp, you make a noise which shows you are. If you are cowed by a development, you feel. If something wobbles, it. If a business is inherently uneconomic, it is uneconomic because of. If a medicine mitigates the effects of an injury, it. If an activity is illicit, it is. If a service is hidden behind a paywall, it is. An activity which is disruptive. 
If two or more services are bundled, if you travel on a perilous journey, you expect... Discussion. John Reith, the founder of the BBC, said that the job of a broadcaster was to inform, educate and entertain. Entertainment was in the third place. Do you think that you are well served by the broadcasters whose programmes come into your home? What would you change? Give your reasons.